You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. from the suburbs of Chicago. Thanks for joining me today, and thanks for listening to RBN, for people who can handle the truth. To see the guest lineup for Studio A and B, please click on the word Schedule in the RBN banner at the top of the page at republicbroadcasting.org. To see the guest schedule for this program, please visit the radio schedule page at spingola.com, where you will see a list of the guests together with links to their websites and other interesting links. Feel free to join my email list to receive a weekly announcement of the scheduled guests and any other special notices. I have linked it to today's date. For questions or comments during the program, email spingola1 at yahoo.com. My regular email is deanna at spingola.com, which I do not access during the program. We will take your calls in the second hour after the first break at... 800-313-9443. Yesterday, I had Dr. Betty Martini on my program. Afterwards, Chris, a listener, sent me a link to a video entitled, War on Health, the FDA's Cult of Tyranny. I have a link to that video on yesterday's date on my radio schedule page. It is quite informative and contains information regarding our health care options. However, be discriminating as there are some very subtle false statements in the film, as well as some questionable participants. My guest today is Dr. Samuel Milham. His website is sammilham.com. He is the author of Dirty Electricity, which is a fabulous book. In fact, it's uh, Dirty Electricity, Electrification, and the Diseases of Civilization. Welcome to the program, Dr. Milham. Good morning. I got your book on Monday, and I haven't quite finished it, but I am just just at the very end. I got it Monday afternoon in the mail. Fabulous book. Thank you. Lots of uh, good things. I I, uh, also uh, linked uh, the Occupational Mortality Database, which you have listed on page 30 in your book to today's date so that people can look at that. And um, I, I advise everyone also to look at your bio. Uh, you have quite a biography, uh, quite a bio, and um, uh, quite a history. And uh, you certainly have uh, done a lot to inform the public and have worked in various uh, positions. Uh, where you could do a lot of good, make, do a lot of investigations, and uh, I, I really appreciate that. That's been fun. <clears throat> well, yes, I, I imagine it has, but you've also had your challenges uh, because, uh, well, in some of your investigations, uh, the people have not really been very cooperative and have basically just ignored what, your findings and uh, gone ahead and uh, done what they wanted to, even though it was detrimental to to the people's health. Uh, for instance, in, in the one school uh, that you uh, were testing for for uh, dirty electricity, uh, you you gave them your findings, and I would have thought they would have been extremely grateful, uh, but in fact they kind of dismissed you and got a lawyer to write you a, a letter. Yeah, well, that's not the only school. That's been my my uh, experience with uh, with these California schools I've dealt with. You know, one a couple of northern schools up in Washington State, uh, which I dealt with before, have been perfectly helpful. But down there, uh, I guess they're under the gun financially. Uh, they've run out of money, and they're firing teachers, and so the schools are desperate to uh, to have income. <clears throat> and another school down there. Uh, uh, Doctor, we, we do have to take a real quick three-minute break, but we'll be right back in three minutes. Welcome 
Welcome back. Our guest today is Dr. Samuel Milham. His website is sammilham.com. He is the author of Dirty Electricity, Electrification, and the Diseases of Civilization. Uh, before we, we talk about the schools, uh, will you please tell the listeners why you became an epidemiologist and also give us a simple definition of dirty electricity? Medical school and uh, internship, uh, I, uh, I was really more interested in why people got sick, what brought them to the bed here, what, what caused them to die, rather than, than I liked the diagnosis and, and I didn't mind. Treating was okay, I liked delivering babies, but I was always more interested in why and how people got sick, what brought them to us. You, know, you see the same things all the time in the hospital and in your medical office and I was really interested in finding out you know, why were people were coming and, uh, and and interested in prevention more than in, in the treatment part of it. So that's why I got into epidemiology. And the simple definition of epidemiology is uh, it's the study of the disease, the distribution of diseases in human populations, and uh, it's fairly simple business. Now, dirty electricity. Uh, it's a it's a term coined by the utilities. They deliver 60 cycle or, or 50 cycle power in Europe, uh, 60 over here. And uh, if you look at it on the oscilloscope, it's a nice, clean sine wave. It goes up and down like waves. The dirt electricity is electrical pollution that rides on the sine wave and gets into your house uh, as it's delivered. And it's caused by arcing, by sparking, by any, any device that interrupts current flow. There's a lot of Moran now uh, switching power supplies. What's happened over the last, say, 30 years, uh, most of the electrical devices, like your computer, your copy machines, transmitters, cell phones, they all run on direct current, and the utility provides alternating current, which has to be changed to direct. And uh, the devices that do the changing, the switching power supplies, interrupt the current, and they make a lot of this dirty electricity. And there's the problem. Okay. Uh, yes, and we all like our toys, and uh, and certainly, but but you say that basically uh, we are uh, getting dirty electricity when we use these because of the interruption in in the way that it's delivered. Right? Yeah, but uh, you know, I think it actually goes back to Tom Edison. He. Uh, in his archives and in one of his early patents, he uh, complained bitterly about uh, his generators. He had nine big generators in Pearl Street Station. They were called jumbos. They weighed tons of these big things. And uh, the electric brush is just a device that picks the, the current generated up off the commutator, the thing that spins. And, uh, and they're called brushes because they look like that initially. They were copper wires bound up at the top. I mean, now brushes are, are carbon or uh, graphite blocks or me graphite metal blocks that touch the, the commutator or the armature that, that pick it up. Electric motors are the same. They've got brushes too. But he had terrible problems with uh, brush arcing and, and wear of his commutators uh, on his machines. And, Every time those things were actually got to pull the whole thing apart. So he uh, he tried first to put metallic mercury uh, 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 on the the brushes and and develop the amalgams, uh, mercury amalgams uh, to uh, to smooth out the arcing. It worked, but it made made the people sick from mercury poisoning. So he finally went to sacrificial shoes. He made anode. Uh, commutator pieces that he could put on there that he could, he could take out when they wore out. So uh, um, this arcing and dirty electricity goes right back to Edison in square ones. Uh, when he was delivering his uh, initial electricity uh, in the, into the uh, city of New York, he was uh, putting out this dirty electricity. And I think it shows because very early, most of the cities in the, in the country had electricity by... 19, the turn of the century, 1900. And very shortly thereafter, you could see that mortality uh, had really increased. Uh, I got one paper that looks at, uh, uh, well, what has, electric, electrification in this country uh, proceeded very, very slowly. 
because of the great expense and the, and the distances. People had to buy their own wires <laughs> until uh, the government stepped in in the Depression and, and passed the, the Raw Electrification Act. But, so uh, the, the last farms in this country didn't get electrified until the mid-50s. See, here you had almost half a century where the urban populations of big cities all had electricity and rural areas didn't. So I took advantage of that, and it turns out that the census, uh, you know, when they came around and counted bodies and asked questions, they asked whether your residence was hooked to the grid in 1930, 40, and 50. I used that data and showed that uh, if you looked at percent of, of residences that were hooked to the grid, it, uh, it predicted uh, mortality from the major, the major uh, so-called diseases of civilization. In other words, there's evidence way back in Edison's time in the 20s and 30s that uh, this dirty electricity that was being generated was, was killing us because uh, it was a mortality study. We're looking at deaths. So cancer was, was much higher in urban areas, as was diabetes, as was suicide, as was... Uh, the, uh, the cancers, almost all of them. I started this uh, this investigation of mortality with childhood leukemia, and showed that that the major leukemia of childhood, uh, you know, which still doesn't exist in places like sub-Saharan Africa where they don't have electricity, the major type in this country and around the world has a strong cor correlation with uh, residential electrification. That in this country, uh, if you're, they weren't electrified, you didn't get this disease. Uh, and, but, but, of course, we all like to have electricity. Uh, is it the way that it is uh, dispensed? That well, yeah, yeah. No. No, it, it's, it looks to me, and if you look at just the magnetic fields, uh, it doesn't seem to, to, to cause much problems. I think the problem is the dirty electricity. If you can get the dirt out and deliver clean electricity, I think we could get away with a lot of our toys and uh, the rest of it. But uh, the evidence is, is really building up. In fact, I'm sitting down writing a paper right now about electric brush arcing and, and how it, it's responsible for all sorts of stuff. Uh, I, th I think the suicide in our troops in Afghanistan and Iraq is suicide's long been associated with electromagnetic fields. Uh, residential and occupational studies, you know, 25 years ago showed that. And, and, and uh, the, the thing in, in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq is <clears throat> they import 20.2 billion dollars worth of fuel oil every year just for one thing: air conditioning. And they air condition by using brush generators to, to cool the tents and the, and the buildings. And they really make a lot of dirty electricity. So that's my my theory on that. And uh, and there's more data suggesting that the current epidemics of uh, diabetes and obesity, high body mass index are again related to brush arcing. The places in the world that have the highest obesity, diabetes, and fasting blood glucose rates are all little islands out in the Pacific and in the Atlantic. Uh, and these little islands, they don't have any wood or coal. Uh, they import fuel oil, have portable generators, and, and, and the generators make this dirty electricity. But just brush generators do that. I've measured a bunch of them, and they're all dirty. Now, uh, didn't Thomas Edison uh, team up with a lot of the <clears throat> a lot of the bankers and industrial uh, moguls back in, in like the eighteen early eighteen nineties? And didn't they kind of tell him how to operate his uh, his concern? Well, uh, Ed it, it, Edison it, it, General Electric Company. Yeah, the big change there was uh, uh, Tesla. Uh, the original uh, Edison system was a direct current system. But Tesla uh, quickly showed that uh, there are great advantages to using alternating current because uh, you could you have transformers and you could you could serve different customers uh, from from the uh, step down transformer and you can't do that with direct current. So Edison's initial system you had to run a wire from the generator to, to the customer and uh, was, so by the turn of the century we we're well the world was well into Tesla's alternating system, and uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of politics when money's involved. And uh, sure, he they, he had running gun battles with Westinghouse, and uh, and and a lot of people. The early history of electrification is, is it's it's very interesting. Uh, 
there were lots of individual entrepreneurs and companies that set up electric companies. Like in Pennsylvania, I think there were 40 or 50 different companies, and gradually they amalgamated down into just a few. And uh, now we have public utilities, we've got private utilities, and there's still a push like out here in Washington State, where I live, they're trying to get rid of the private utility and go public, which I think is a good thing because there's no profit. Okay. Um, well, it's just very interesting. Uh, I mean, the government basically uh, seized all of Tesla's patents and whatnot, and uh, I think that, uh, that probably the uh, utility companies are, in fact, making quite a lot of profit, uh, particularly in, in some areas of the country. And um, um, I'm sure you're probably aware of smart meters. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, my phone rings all the time. And, and, and I think the smart meter problem is, is a, it's just a twofold problem. I, they, the ones that transmit radio frequency, uh, they all have switching power supplies in them. So they, they put dirty electricity into your house and into your wires and, and into your neighbors. And uh, I've had a lot of people get sick. From their, when the smart meter got put on their house, and uh, some of them have been able to uh, recover by f- cleaning up uh, the, the, the dirty electricity in their house while the smart meter is still there. So I think the smart, the dirty electricity part of the transmission of the smart meter may be very significant. And in addition, uh, do- Doctor, I'm sorry, we do have to go to a three-minute break. We will be right back, and we'll pick that subject up on the other side. Uh, that is M-I-L-H-A-M. His website is sammilham.com. He is the author of Dirty Electricity, Electrification, and the Diseases of Civilization. And just before the break, we were talking about smart meters. And uh, you implied that there was a way of getting rid of dirty electricity in these smart meters. And I know a lot of people have had them uh, put on their homes, uh, even though they oppose these things, and um, many people are getting sick. Oh, yeah, a lot of people are getting sick. I, I know a couple of women have had to leave their homes because uh, they got that sick. And, uh, you know, the, I, I just find the whole idea of the smart meter program, uh, it, it's a it, it's a profit-making deal for the utilities. They got rid of the meter readers, uh, but, and I think that it's a terrible invasion of privacy. They know exactly what's going on in your house. And, and the other sinister thing is uh, new appliances are being made with transmitters in them that are on most of the time to, to talk or transmit their data from the specific, uh, uh, the specific device, like your dishwasher, your refrigerator, your freezer, uh, to, to the smart meter. And, uh, and, and so that, that means that you're going to have a hot kitchen or wherever your appliance is, uh, and, and uh, for what? And, and you know, they, they think they put 7 million of them in California. Boy, there's been a, a lot of people be, are, been getting ill, and uh, they've worked toward, for opt-out, but the utilities are, are going to charge people to, uh, to opt out of, of getting it and charge them for, you know, an annual fee and an initial opt-out fee, which I think is, is really stupid. But uh, see, a couple of states, I think Maine is just <clears throat> going to, uh, are not going to allow these things to be deployed, which I think is smart. And it's not just here, it's in Europe, too. And uh, this whole thing about uh, m- making electricity uh, use uh, more reasonable is, is, is a boondoggle too because uh, I've been studying solar and wind, so-called green energies, and boy, they make a lot of dirty electricity also. And, and again, it's the devices that change the electricity that they generate, like photovoltaic cells generate direct current. At the time to the grid, you need a, a grid intertie uh, inverter, <clears throat> which is a switching power supply, and they make a, a lot of dirty electricity. Uh, I've measured lots of homes that have, you know, rooftop solar. And when the sun's out and, and generating DC, uh, those houses have a lot of uh, dirty electricity on a switching power supply. 
as soon as the sun goes down or you shut the shut the machine off, there's none. And uh, wind, wind is even worse because it gives you pressure waves. Uh, and and uh, Nina Pierpoint wrote a book about uh, wind wind uh, power syndrome, uh, windmill syndrome. And uh, but I've measured you know, lots of uh, some Indian reservations down in Southern California where they've got 20 or 30 mil, uh, windmills, uh, wind towers. Uh, and it, it puts uh, dirty electricity into the air, into the ground, into the wires, and it goes forever. The substations are really dirty, too. Oh, my goodness. I think a lot of people assume that if they go to solar power that they won't to have to deal with this uh, this issue. When well, no, no, solar can be okay if it's, if it's a direct current system. But if you want to you know, use your AC toys, you have to convert it, and that's where the problem is. Or if, it, if it's thermal solar, where you know they have some solar ta- solar systems where they got mirrors that that heat up a tower <clears throat> and generate steam or, or heat oil, that's okay. But it's the conversion between uh, DC and AC that that's the problem. And I think they could probably manufacture inverters or converters, grid intertight <clears throat> converters that. Uh, that that would be clean, but right now they're all bad. I mean, I've never never me- measured a clean one. You know, it almost seems like this is uh, kind of deliberate uh, to to make us uh, really sick. And you mentioned uh, the no, fact I think, that... No, I think they're too stupid to do that. I just think they're, they're being pushed by profit and uh, this going green business. Uh, remember, n- nuclear power is the same thing. Uh, now, after Fukushima, <coughs> you know, and, and Chernobyl... Uh, People realize that hey, this is, maybe isn't the way to go, and uh, and I think it's going to be the same with with uh, solar. I mean, they're advertising solar as uh, I mean, it is cheap. Uh, if you if you I've, I've been in houses where they they do all their alternating current uh, use uh, with a big solar, or expensive solar array on the roof, but they're going to pay the price for health because uh, those places are just dirty, have ter- terrible dirty electricity in the house. On a, uh, when the inverter's on. Now, you mentioned uh, before the break that there was a way of getting rid of dirty electricity uh, in the smart meters, if, if somebody has a smart yeah, well, meter in their home. Well, uh, Dave Stetzer, uh, StetzerElectric.com, uh, manufactures uh, their capacitors. You plug them into an outlet and they'll short out the high frequency and let the... the the 60 cycle stuff through, and they uh, they could do a really good job of cleaning up dirty electricity in, in houses and, uh, oh, and What's the name again? Stetzer. S T E T Z E R. Stetzer Electric. Okay, sounds like a really good place to visit here. All righty, we do have a three minute break. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Welcome back. Our guest today is Dr. Samuel Milham. His website is sammilham.com. He is the author of Dirty Electricity, Electrification, and the Diseases of Civilization. And I visited that website uh, that you recommended, Stetzer, uh, let's see, electric.com, and uh, it's, it's wonderful that there's, a, you know, some sort of a solution to our problem if perhaps uh, we have been unlucky enough to have a smart meter placed on our home. I don't have one, but uh, and I have been opposing it and have written to the electric company here in Illinois, uh, telling them that I refuse to allow them to do that. But it appears they have other intentions. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, uh, I don't think they have any legal right to, to trespass on your property and put it on, but uh, I'm no lawyer. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the filters 
expensive filters to take care of the dirty electricity. They won't stop the radio frequency, which can be a problem for certain people. I, I talked to one poor devil who, uh, the day they, they, he had a implanted cardiac, uh, I agree. He, uh, he had a cardioverter. It's a thing in his chest to, uh, start up his heart when it was beating irregularly. And when they put the meter on his house, uh, he couldn't use his bedroom anymore because, uh, the, the smart meter was on the bedroom wall. Every time he went in there, it'd, it'd give his heart a jolt to get it started again. So, uh, so he, he's been, was sleeping in the garage when I talked to him. I don't know. Uh, but see, that's a radio frequency problem. That's not a dirty electricity problem. And these things do put out microwaves, RF, to, to talk to, uh, the substation and, or to the utility down the line. Right. Okay, you've talked about, um, some of the terrible diseases and in your book. Uh, what are some of those diseases that are associated with, uh, with radio frequency uh, and with, um, with dirty electricity? You name it, all of them. I mean, I've got a paper that I talk about in the book, and there's lots of charts. Uh, it, it's called uh, Evidence. I, I, I'm on, at the computer. Maybe I can go find the title for us. I think it's, well, it's, it'll be in the reference. Uh, if you if they go to my website and look in the recent papers, uh, you can get a PDF to actually read the paper. I, what I did is I took, took the U.S. mortality data in 1940 and looked at how the causes of uh, death rates were distributed by residential electrification by state. And, uh, I mean, all the, almost all the cancers, uh, diabetes, uh, uh, cardiovascular disease and suicide were clearly related to level of residential electrification. So that's prima facie evidence that EMF, probably dirty electricity, had something to do with that. And uh, now, and now we got epidemics of childhood asthma, uh, obesity, and and uh, and uh, there's one, one other. Uh, asthma is epidemic, and especially in urban kids, and uh, obesity. Oh, diabetes is is another major epidemic. Uh, the, these epidemics started back at the turn, turn of the century, but now it's it's really, really out of out of hand. And there's a couple of papers uh, published in the British Journal of the Lancet last year, looking at the worldwide distribution of uh, obesity, fasting plasma glucose. And, and diabetes prevalence. And what you see is a remarkable concentration. The highest places in the world are the little bitty islands out in the Pacific and in the Atlantic, which use breast generators to, to, to power them. And, uh, and I think that's the re and they make dirty electricity in spades. And I think that's the reason that these people are so heavy and, and, and uh, getting diabetes. So, uh, and, and the idea of that, it's one, one group of people in this country. The Amish, uh, the, the Old Order Amish, they're a Mennonite sect. They migrated here from Europe to escape persecution in the 1700s. They don't use electricity at all. They they rip wires out of their house when they buy a house or a farm that's got wire that has electrification. They don't use TV or any electrical appliances. And their mortality and morbidity is drastically different than ours. They don't have any childhood obesity. No attention deficit disorder in their kids, whereas seven percent of our kids take pills for it. Uh, their cancer rates are about half what they should, what ours are. Their diabetes rates are forty percent of what ours are, and uh, their body mass index or obesity is, is flat compared to ours. So hey, they, they're uh, they're they're kind of the the control for us. Uh, it's hard to uh, since everybody's exposed to this stuff. Uh, it's hard to find a good comparison group, but they're the best uh, that we have. And if you look, look at what ails them and ails us, you can. The big difference is they don't have electrical exposure like we do. They don't drive cars. They use horse and buggy. Uh, yet they eat a lot and uh, they eat greasy stuff and nice gravies. And yet they don't get fat. And I, I, so I think that's evidence that. Uh, Electricity is making us fat, giving us asthma, giving us all these cancers. And, and I think I understand, uh, since I wrote this book, uh, actually I'm updating it now, I think I understand how it works now. 
And <clears throat> It's very interesting that you brought up uh, some of the islands, um, and I'm thinking. I thought immediately of Samoa. Uh, so many of the people from that from those that area are um, are just very, very obese. I mean, you know, very anyway, obese. Yeah, I, I've got the uh, you know, here's the, the the top ten uh, obesity places in the world uh, from from these Lancet papers. Nauru, which is a phosphate island out in the Pacific, Cook Islands, Tonga, Samoa, Palau, Marshall Islands, Kiribati, here's a non-island, Kuwait, and then St. Kitts and Nevis, or, that's in the Atlantic. Now, I find out that Kuwait and Saudi Arabia turns out in the diabetes list. Here's, here's diabetes. I just read Body Mass Index, which is obesity. Here are the top ten diabetes places in the world. Marshall Islands. Kiribati, Saudi Arabia, Cook Islands, Palau, Jordan, Solomon Islands, Kuwait, Tonga, and Cape Verde. Fasting plasma glucose, the list is Marshall Islands, Kiribati again, Samoa again, Saudi Arabia, Cook Islands, Palau, Jordan, Tonga, Kuwait, and Solomon Islands. Okay, now the, the, the Middle East places, I looked them up and uh, the grids are limited. They have a large segment of their population off the grid. So how do they get electricity? They're using brush generators, diesel generators. So that's why, why they're on the list. So I think this is remarkable evidence that that this dirty electricity is responsible for diabetes, uh, high fasting plasma glucose, and for obesity. And uh, uh, but the thing that's, that worries me is... Uh, is, is I, th I think some of it is due to in utero exposure. In other words, a woman gets pregnant, she's exposed to this stuff, and it imprints her kids. And there's a good study by one of my friends, Dequan Lee, showing that EMF exposure during pregnancy predicts asthma rate in the kids later on of that mother. You know? So, you know, I, th I think hey, we're doing ourselves in and have been doing ourselves in for over 100 years, and we don't know it yet. So I wrote the book. Right. Just, uh, any... Aren't there other factors? Uh, for instance, uh, the Amish never uh, give their children vac vaccines, and um, uh, well, I, I, you know, I, I don't I don't think vaccines have got anything to do with obesity, or, or with with uh, or with uh, with blood blood sugar or, or, or diabetes. You know. Okay. And, and, um. You you had a you have a paper on uh, male breast cancer in office workers. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, male breast cancer is a remarkable disease in that it's rare. I mean, men men just don't get it like women do. But if you look at the there's been I think over ten, maybe eleven studies that link electromagnetic field exposures with uh, male breast cancer, and I'm really angry that. Uh, there's an epidemic of this disease at Camp Lejeune in, North, in the Marines down there. They had a website, and they've actually lobbied Congress, uh, and they claim it's due to the fact that there were, was contaminated drinking water, organic solvents in the water. Hey, organic solvents don't give you breast cancer, don't give you cancer of these other diseases. I mean, I'd, I looked at an office, uh, I, 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 read, I, would, I testified for one of the breast cancer cases. There were three guys who sat in the same office in a basement, in Albuquerque, right near electrical service room. And so they all had very high magnetic field and dirty electricity exposures. I didn't even know about dirty electricity way back then. But they all got male breast cancer. It's like lightning striking the same place three times. Uh, so, and it was certainly uh, related to their exposure. And, and a guy named Aaron, E-R-R-E-N, wrote a review paper of male breast cancer, and I think he cites including my paper, 11 others that show the same thing. So I talked to the Marines. I wrote to them. I wrote to the government. I wrote to the Marines' attorneys. And and no response because they want to get the money. And uh, But, I mean, and the people who are investigating uh, uh, the Marines' situation with the chlorinated uh, hydrocarbons that they're allegedly drinking, uh, they're barking up the wrong tree. It's strictly an EMS disease. And, uh, and, and, uh, but like I said, nobody wants to hear the truth if there's money involved. Right, because, um, okay, uh, where is this money? What is the, how does money play a part in this? Well, the, the Marines have lobbied Congress. It's got to be your taxes and mine be paid to clean up the base and to indemnify these people. 
they'll probably give Nietzsche a, if they, if they had a cancer, or, and not just the male breast cancer. They're, they're saying all these other things, the birth defects are due to the trichinous chlorinated hydrocarbons. That's that's just not true. I mean, uh, there's lots of places along the Mississippi where you drink a lot of this stuff, and they don't have, have any of these pre- male breast cancer. Male breast cancer are positive as an EMF disease. And uh, I think so is female breast cancer as far as that goes, but uh, nobody wants to hear that either. You know? Now, how does that occur? In a female breast, uh, breast cancer, and well, how is that associated with EMFs? And well, have well, you done some testing that, that study on that, this? That study you can get on my website uh, that looks at the historical uh, electrification rates. Male, female breast cancer uh, in, in rural America in the 30s and 40s had a 70 cent per, percent correlation with level of uh, of residential electrification, and the higher the, the number, the percent of houses in your state in, in those those eras, in those times, the higher the, the female breast cancer rate, and it's it's very very statistically significant. It's almost I think 79 percent correlation, positive correlation. So it's it's an indirect measure, but it says that uh, the female breast cancer spread across this country, as did the other cancers, as did childhood leukemia, as did cardiovascular disease. This epidemic spread with electricity. And, and uh, like I said, the Amish were living 70, 73 years uh, when, when the rest of us were dying uh, at, at, uh, at age 40, 43 for men and 46 for women in, in the big cities I mean, at the turn of the century. And... and uh, I mean that that's pretty solid proof that uh, EMF is is causing us uh, uh, problems. Okay, now not only do you say it, but but you have uh, tested. Uh, so tell us about the Lakinta School and and what tests well, you made Le- and Le- what you found. Well, Lakinta School was uh, interesting in, in that you know way back in the eighties, I wrote a paper showing that if you worked with electricity, you had more cancer more leukemia of certain types and uh, that got me into trying to understand what was going on so the first study I did was uh, the childhood leukemia study we showed that that it spread the age 4 age peak kids uh, there's a peak at age say 2, 3 and 4 they, that peak spread across the country in sync with elect- uh, the spread of electrification ok so but yeah, after we did those studies, uh, there are probably two, three hundred studies of residences, residential and occupational cancer versus EMF and other diseases. But they all, all studied uh, power frequency magnetic fields. You know how much magnetic fields were were being expo- uh, we were being exposed to. But you know, I never believed it was magnetic fields uh, because the risks weren't that much. They were like double or tripled. If you look at smokers. Uh, uh, a two pack a day smoker has 20 fold risk of, of, uh, of lung cancer. Okay, so come to look into the study. I, I read about an epidemic in the school. We just bought a condo down in Indio in, in Southern California. The school about four miles away, uh, they wrote about a, a cancer cluster in it. And just from reading the newspaper article, I knew they really had one because it it's a small school. They had lots of cancers. So I, I did a study without the help of the school. They just they hadn't didn't want anything to do with it. But the teachers and, and, uh, helped us. And we, but what we did there that was different was measure the dirty electricity. Actually, we didn't measure. We got the state to measure the dirty electricity in every classroom, and the the level of the dirty electricity in a classroom predicted the teachers' cancer risk, and and they had risks like ten to fifteen times background. And uh, based on small numbers, so that was really a mind blower. I said, "Well, here we finally found out it's not magnetic fields because they were normal in the school. It's the dirty electricity levels that were, were causing causing the, the problem." So, and what, was the school willing to uh, clean this up or no? Oh, of course, no. They they threatened me with a with criminal trespass for. I got invited into the school to make some measurements. Uh, and I told them about it, and I got a letter from their attorneys threatening me with uh, using the Homeland Security Act. I guess I'm a terrorist, you know. But yeah, that's not the worst of it. Uh, when our teacher, when I published it, 
an elementary school across town, uh, Vista Del Monte Elementary. I got a call from a teacher over there, and she said, you know, we got lots of cancer in our teachers, too. And when I drove over, look at the place. I was just flabbergasted. They got a cell tower smack dab on campus about 20 feet from the from the classroom. And in fact, all over California now, the, the, the schools are plastered with cell towers and, and the firehouses, too. Any public property, they're getting this rent. They get 1500 a month rent from the cell phone companies to put these stupid things on uh, right next to kids and firemen and uh, well, anyway, there was an t- epidemic in that school of, uh, of cancer. But uh, the, uh, one, the one of the classrooms, the kids were, well, one of the teachers complained that her kids were unteachable. They were jumping around and hyperactive. And I felt at that classroom, and within a half hour, an hour, those kids were calm again. And I found uh, that this wasn't the first time this had been done. Uh, it had been done back in the 70s. The problem there was dirty electricity from fluorescent lights. And a guy named John Ott had uh, showed that if, if you uh, grounded and, and, and screened out the dirty electricity from the lights, the kids calmed right down. Actually, that was a video. Okay. <clears throat> we do have to go to a break. We will be right back and pick this up on the other side of the break. It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. We here at RBN are working with Front Sight Firearms Training Institute to bring our audience the best in combat, tactical, and defensive firearms training. Whether you're a private citizen who is new to firearms or you have a concealed weapon permit and want a level of training that surpasses what you've received from your local gun range, Front Sight provides priceless education and skills taught by seasoned law enforcement, military, and private citizen instructors to levels that far exceed law enforcement and military standard. With nearly a million responsible citizens trained from every town, city, and state from across the United States, Front Sight has bolstered the Patriot movement to a whole new level. Contact Dan Sutterfield by phone at 573-762-2356 or 573-465-2356 or shoot him an email at domedan, D-O-M-E-D-A-N, at hotmail.com. This is a limited time opportunity. Don't miss it. Many people tell us about their experience with Extendivite. Welcome back. Our guest today is Dr. Samuel Milham. His website is sammilham.com. He is the author of Dirty Electricity, Electrification, and the Diseases of Civilization. And right before the break, you talked about a a schoolroom in which the children were just bouncing practically off the walls and that you filtered that schoolroom. How did you do that? What did you do? Oh, well, I I measured the place. Uh, I think it had five outlets, and they were were in the thousands of dirty electricity units where recommended levels around 50. So I just plugged five filters in, stretch of filters, uh, and uh, it was a Friday Friday after school. I never was there when the kids were in school. And uh, and I just didn't say a word. I just didn't tell the teacher why or what, what to expect. And uh, uh, she's like 40, late 40s, 48. Uh, and uh, But she called me the next week, uh, I think Thursday, and said, you know, God, the kids are amazingly different. She said, they're teacher... She said, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, the kids are perfect. But Wednesday, they were sort of bad. And I said, what's different about Wednesday? She said, oh, my God, that's the day they go to the library. So she noticed right, right, right off the bat from Monday morning something was going on. And I lost less track of her. She she was the 13th cancer in that group of teachers. And I, I got to see her last fall. She was going to give me back the filters but because uh, she gone on, got, got laid off or I guess she was sick for a year, so she didn't teach. But I know I gave her the filter. She said, keep them next time you get in another school, plug them in. But she told me that she couldn't believe that the filters could have this kind of effect. So what she did was she pulled the filters, unplugged them. And and she said within 40 minutes or 45 minutes, uh, the kids would revert to their 
there are hyperactive ways that you plug them in and the kids have calmed down. So she showed that it was a rapid time thing. And, uh, so that, that's, you know, and, uh, you know, the Amish don't have any ADHD in the kids. I mean, there's some pediatric practices that take care of big numbers of those families and they never see that. They never see childhood obesity and there's very little childhood asthma in, in the Amish kids. Okay. Now, uh, this filter takes care of the dirty electricity, but it does not take care of the radio frequency. Oh, it doesn't. You see, like in that school, uh, I made measurements in the classroom. It was only 50, 50 feet from the top of that antenna. There was high RF all over the room. But just getting rid of the dirty electricity changed the, the, the behavior of the kids. So I think that's good evidence that the dirty electricity was driving their behavior. Okay. I do have a question, uh, an email question from Steve. He says, please ask or mention to your guests uh, that if everyone used these capacitators uh, uh, to eliminate dirty electricity, uh, would this drastically increase the inductive load that the power companies have to deal with? It, it probably would if everybody used them. So far, just a, a, a trivial bunch of people. But, you know, it would be a pain for the utilities. But uh, let's face it, they're the problem. I mean, they're, they're the ones that are pumping this dirt into, into our houses. What's really happened uh, since computers came on about 30 years ago, uh, we looked at when the grid was built, all the electricity that they pumped into your house or your business went, what came on wires and went back on wires. Okay. Uh, we have our 60-second top-of-the-hour break. We will be right back, and then let's talk about that uh, when we come back. Uh, that's really important to talk about the neutral wire and, and all that stuff. Be right back. <laughs> 